So Kamala the other day said, uh, you know, we got to get to the root. We got to get to the root of what's causing these migrants, these Haitians in particular, to come here. Uh, I don't know if she's come to the her solution, but uh, we've done the work for her. I'll tell you exactly why Haitians in particular are coming. It's because of the Clinton. They think, they, the Haitians, the Haitians think we, America, owe them. Let me say it again. The Haitians think we owe them. Okay, we're going to strike the root here. We'll go back to 2010. Major earthquake in Haiti. All right, remember that? Who stepped up? The Clinton Foundation. The Clinton Foundation stepped up. Now, at this point, the Clinton Foundation was still pretending to be an actual charity and not this giant money laundering influence peddling operation. And the Clinton Foundation stepped up and said, we're going to fix Haiti. We're going to come in. We're going to fix Haiti. Do you know what their motto was? Do you know what their slogan was at the Clinton Foundation for Haiti? What do you think? What, what was the Clinton Foundation's big, like, rallying cry motivating call to Haiti after an earthquake? Take a guess. Build back better. Isn't that incredible? <laughs> Build back better. Same thing they're saying now about COVID. So the Clinton Foundation came and they made all these promises to the people of Haiti, and nothing happened. And actually, even worse than nothing good happened. A lot of bad things happened. Backing it up even more, the Clintons got married in 1975. It was the beginning of their, their long, beautiful love affair. Affair is not a good word to use. Their beautiful love, whatever. Uh, part of the honeymoon was in Haiti. <laughs> they went to Haiti on their honeymoon. I don't know what Haiti was like in 1975, but they went there, and Haiti's always had a special place in their hearts since then. So after the earthquake, the Clintons stepped up. They led the whole global response. So Bill was the chair of the Clinton Foundation to direct all the international relief spending. Hillary at the time was Secretary of State. She oversaw the $4.4 billion from Congress that was funneled through. It's called USAID. It's the U.S. Agency for International Development, USAID. So the Clintons were in charge of everything when it came to Haiti's effort to build back better. You with me? It didn't go well. And up until about 2016, when Hillary ran for president, uh, there was some reporting on this that happened. Some actual real life journalism about, hey, is anyone wondering what, like, where did that money go? <laughs> How, how's Haiti doing now? After we spent over $10 tr billion dollars or 10, well, I don't even know how much money was I say? 10 trillion billion? I did a ridiculous amounts of money. How's it going there? And then she ran for president, and then all this reporting stopped. But I'll tell you a little bit how it went. Uh, there was an industrial park, one in particular, 600 acres, $300 million. And the U.S. government said, we're going to finance a power plant. We're going to finance a power plant. Uh, and, and what's going to happen is all these companies are going to ship in cotton. And then Haitians are going to make T-shirts and jeans and then ship them out. And it's great. Uh, that was the plan, right? That way the Haitians will have jobs, and it'll be great. Uh, the plan failed completely. Every, everything about it failed. Uh, the U.S. government also said we're going to build a port. The port never happened. Never built a port. One author, uh, one actual journalist said, Haitians are living in a state of despair and daily desperation. Now, why does that matter today? It matters today because now they're blaming their despair not just on an earthquake, but on America. Because America promised to fix it, and we didn't. Now, Bill actually has a history of this. Bill has a history of screwing up Haiti. He even admitted it. This is Bill Clinton in front of a congressional committee in 2010. Since 1981, the United States has followed a policy until the last year or so we started rethinking it that we rich countries that produce a lot of food should sell it to poor countries and relieve them of the burden of producing their own food. So thank goodness they can leap directly into the industrial era. It has not worked. It's maybe been good for some of my farmers in Arkansas, but it has not worked. It was a mistake. It was a mistake that I was a party to. I am not pointing the finger at anybody. I did that. I had to live every day with the consequences of the lost capacity to produce a rice crop in Haiti to feed those people because of what I did. Nobody else.
I almost I almost don't want to criticize him too much for that because that is the most accountability I've, I've maybe ever heard from a politician about anything. So I don't, I don't want to slam him for it as much as just point out that even he's acknowledged that our economic policies for a long time, well before the earthquake even, uh, destroyed Haiti. Oh, lots of other forces as well, but we made things even worse. In the 1970s, Haiti grew enough food for itself. In the 1970s, Haiti grew enough food for itself. In 2010, when the earthquake hit, they were already importing 80% of their food. They were importing 80% because we were dumping cheap food into the, onto their island, and their local farms couldn't compete. So they all went out of business. So Clinton knew that our policies have failed Haiti before, and now here we are after their earthquake, doubling down on it all again. The Haitians think we owe them. That's why they're coming. And I understand it. I understand where they're coming from. Do you understand their argument? I get their argument. Their argument is, you America, through bad economic policy, look, even Bill Clinton admits, you America impoverished our country. Then we had an earthquake, and you promised over $10 billion in aid to build back better. We saw none of that. And not only that, my family's farms were destroyed to clear projects that never happened. So we left for Brazil, and life stinks there, and now we're coming to America because you owe us. You screwed us over, you made us promises, and now you owe us. Wow, that was deep and insightful. I want more of that. Like, subscribe, get more.